Hello everyone. Now I am going to explain you about the atrial fibrillation. I am going to talk about the definition, etiology, hemodynamics, types of atrial fibrillation, its clinical features, complications and later the management. Firstly, what is how will you define atrial fibrillation? It is defined as disorganized and rapid. The atrial impulses are disorganized, rapid, but irregular atrial stimulation. In spite of this irregular atrial stimulation, it is associated with loss of atrial contraction. Loss of atrial contractions and irregular ventricular contraction. Where this is determined by AV nodal conduction. I repeat, atrial fibrillation is defined as disorganized, rapid, irregular atrial stimulation. What is this irregular atrial stimulation? It's at the impulses of 350 to 600 beats per minute. But it is associated with loss of atrial contraction and so the irregular ventricular contractions are at the rate of 100 to 140 beats per minute. This is the definition of atrial fibrillation. When next we come to etiology of atrial fibrillation, the most common causes of atrial fibrillation are, first we should tell that the most common causes are, RHD that is rheumatic heart disease and the congenital heart diseases that is most commonly atrial septal defect. Next is hypertensive heart disease uh, then HOCM that is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy then others like pericardial diseases. There are so many causes that are responsible for atrial fibrillation. The next common causes we expect in a case of atrial fibrillation is thyrotoxicosis. But the most common cause is RHD and hypertensive heart diseases. Nextly, I discuss about the hemodynamics. The hemodynamics of atrial fibrillation is like, in the definition I have told you there are irregular atrial stimulations where the impulses from the atrium are at the rate of 350 to 600 beats per minute but these impulses are conducted to AV node during the refractory period. So whenever the impulse is reaching the AV node during the refractory period that impulse is not conducted. Hence the ventricle will is not conducted. Hence, the ventricle will contract at the rate of 100 to 140 beats per minute irregularly. We know from our knowledge of physiology, the duration of diastole is directly proportional to the volume of blood pumped uh, volume of blood pumped from the ventricles into the circulation. Based on this knowledge, I would like to explain that in atrial fibrillation, this diastolic duration is short. Hence, the volume pumped from the ventricles into the circulation due to the sh short duration, there will be less blood volume will be pumped into the circulation. Hence, that will lead to usually hypotension and there will be a reduced cardiac output irregularly due to um, irregular ventricular contractions. This, ir uh, this will lead to irregularly irregular pulse and pulse deficit of more than 10 beats per minute in a case of atrial fibrillation. Coming to types of atrial fibrillation, there are of three types. There are three P's, that is, paroxysmal, 
atrial fibrillation, persistent atrial fibrillation and lastly permanent atrial fibrillation. Firstly, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. What do you mean by that? As the word says, it's a paroxysm. Here, the episode will last for less than 7 days. Or it can be treated without, it, uh, the episode can be terminated without any intervention. I repeat, that is paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Here, the episode lasts for less than 7 days. Or the episode can be terminated without any without any intervention. Then, when we come to persistent atrial fibrillation, here the episode lasts for more than 7 days where the episode is terminated where intervention is required. The interventions will be like any cardio one, cardio version, etc. Lastly, permanent atrial fibrillation where the episode lasts in spite of the, there is failed intervention. Then it is called as permanent atrial fibrillation. After types, now let's discuss about clinical features of atrial fibrillation. Um, always clinical features in a medicine, you should divide it into three headings. Since this is a cardiac disease, the clinical features are class, uh, based on these headings we should write. That is symptoms, signs and what ECG changes you expect in this disease. Firstly, symptoms. Here, a, a patient with atrial fibrillation will come, his most common presentation will be with chest discomfort or uh, in hemodynamics we have studied there will be irregular cardiac, reduced cardiac output. So, firstly, chest discomfort or uh, palpitations, other cardiac features like uh, synco, then easy fatigability, then uh, lastly even angina. When we come to signs, means what are the uh, findings on examination in a case of atrial fibrillation. So after history um, on auscultation, uh, we know in atrial fibrillation there will be loss of atrial contraction. So what findings do you expect on auscultation in this patient? There will be absent fourth heart sound. Fourth heart sound will be absent. Then uh, there will be increased atrial impulses but irregular ventricular contractions where the rate is around 100 to 140 beats per minute. So there will be tachycardia and there will be hypotension. Then on further examination we should comment on the pulse. We knew the pulse is irregularly irregular pulse with the pulse deficit of more than 10 beats per minute. Pulse deficit is more than 10 beats per minute. On further examination, what findings do you expect on JVP? Where there is loss of atrial contraction. So on JVP there will be loss of A wave. After examination, um, what will you expect in ECG? Changes in ECG. There will be loss of atrial contraction. So there will be absent P wave. Then further, uh, here we have told there will be irregularly irregular pulse. So here the QRS complex will be also irregularly irregular in nature. Irregularly irregular. Lastly, um, I, what differentials will you give for a case of atrial fibrillation? It will, it will be more often you people will be, con, uh, will be confused with atrial flutter. I will tell you to how to remember how to differentiate uh, atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. In atrial fibrillation, 
here the atrial impulses will be from 350 to 600 beats per minute whereas in atrial flutter in flutter it will be just 250 to 350 beats per minute in uh, to remember in fibrillation there are more letters hence the beats will be it's more in number in flutter the spelling of flutter is less so beats are less to remember like that then other differentials for this case is multiple atrial tachycardia or wandering atrial pacemakers atrial tachycardia with variable block are the other differentials we can give for atrial fibrillation now let's discuss about complications in atrial fibrillation the most common complication in case of atrial fibrillation is thromboembolism why there will be thromboembolism see in atrial fibrillation there will be so there will be atrial impulses which are not which are not conducted further so due to loss of atrial contraction due to loss of atrial contraction there will be stasis of blood in the atrium only due to the stasis of blood which will lead to thrombus formation this thrombus formation later it will dislodge the emboli and enters the circulation which is known as systemic where systemic embolization will occur so most common complication expected in atrial fibrillation is thromboembolism t then other complications we expect is uh, there is one grading uh, to assess the risk of stroke to assess the risk of stroke in an AF patient to remember this risk of uh, stroke when scoring system is there to remember that I'll tell you the mnemonic CVH DAS CVH DAS C means congestive heart failure V is any vascular disease H is hypertension, then D is diabetes mellitus, A is age of 65 to 74 years. Lastly, S is sex. For all these, the score counted is 1. one. Then for two other, the score is 2. The other two are when age is more than 75 years or when the patient will give the history of stroke then the score will be 2 then what is the use of the scoring system is when you add if the score is more than or equal to 2 it is the indication for us to start anti-thrombotic agents anti-thrombotic agents if the score is more than or equal to 9, then there is increased risk of stroke. You should expect an EPO patient. These are the complications of atrial circulation. Then the other complications are uh, cardiac failure, pulmonary embolism. There is increased uh, risk of pulmonary edema. Then the other complications will be syncope and hypotension. Now let's discuss about the management. Now when we come to management of atrial fibrillation, the main goals in the management of this case is, you should con firstly you should achieve hemodynamic stabilization. Then you should control the ventricular rate. Then restoration of sinus rhythm. Then you should prevent the complications and lastly treat the cause. Firstly, it is hemodynamic stabilization. For hemodynamic stabilization, depending on the severity of the case, if the patient is unstable, then you should go through with DC cardioversion. 
if it is stable case like it's not very severely compromised case then you should start first you should reduce the ventricular rate then uh, you should achieve the normal sinus rhythm to reduce the ventricular rate uh, you should um, give the drugs like mainly digoxin or calcium channel blockers calcium channel blockers like uh, diltiazem verapamil then beta blockers like propranolol or it can even give amiodarone to achieve the irregular uh, rhythm of the heart to into normal sinus rhythm here you should give the drugs like quinidine or flucanide even here also you can give amiodarone then to prevent the complications you should start anticoagulants also uh, these anticoagulants are all given mainly to reduce the uh, recurrence in the future but if it's the uh, case of if you um, if af recurs in a case of recurrence the management will be like first mainly you should reduce the ventricular rate then you should start chronically anticoagulants should be given in such patients to prevent further complications then depending on the presentation if the presentation is within 48 hours or more than 48 hours firstly if the patient with af presents within 48 hours to the hospital then you should go with these medical cardio version or electrical cardio version as mentioned above if the presentation is after 48 hours then you, sh- you need to do intervention that is trans esophageal echocardiography should be done on doing this in echocardiography if there are no clots present then you can go start heparin after stabilization of the patient you keep the patient on warfarin if on is of uh, on echocardiography if there are thrombi present if there are thrombi so first start warfarin for 3 weeks when the clots are removed then again you do one cardio version then the patient will stabilize if the cardio version fails then again you need to start warfarin long term to the patient here mainly these antithrombotics are given to prevent uh, further complications like thromboembolism next uh, where warfarin is contraindicated and all then the other drug uh, we are left with is aspirin aspirin should be given that is 325 mg per day it's given it's indicated aspirin is indicated only where warfarin is contraindicated or age of the patient is less than 75 years and there is no no risk factors age should be less than 75 years and when there is contraindication for warfarin in refractory cases you need to use uh, cardiac pacemakers then permanent cardiac pacemaker uh, implantation then surgical ablic- ablation of the bundle of assistance then the cause is treated thank you